Good afternoon, everyone. Before we start, can you type in the chat box one word to describe nanotechnology? So, if you have commented, thank you for participating. As well as for those who haven't yet commented, please do keep it going. By the way, we are the group 4 and this afternoon we will discuss to you the nano world. Next slide please. So here is my team. Next slide again. For today's discussion, the objectives are the following. To understand what nanotechnology. Second, to identify what instrument are used in nanotechnology. Third is to discover the historical breakthrough of nanotechnology. Fourth is to analyze how nanotechnology is applied and lastly, to distinguish the impacts of nanotechnology. So, to proceed, let me call Mr. O'Hara to report what nanotechnology is. Good afternoon everyone, I am Dolfer E. O'Hara and I will be tackling about the what is the nanotechnology and what is the definition of the nanotechnology. So, nanotechnology is a science and engineering and technology conducted at the nanoscale, which is about 1 to 100 nanometers. So, nanotechnology is also the term given to those areas, science and engineering, where phenomena that take place at dimension in the nanometer scale are utilized in the design, characterization, production, and application of materials, structures, devices, and systems. So, although in the natural world, there are many examples of structures that exist with nanometers dimension. Here, after referred to as nanoscale, so including essential molecules within the human body and components of food, and although many technologies have incidentally involved nanoscale structures for many years, it is, has only been in the last quarter of century that it has been possible to actively and intentionally modify molecules and structures with its size range and it is also the control at the nanometer scale that distinguish nanotechnology from areas of technology. So nanotechnology and nanoscience is involved the ability to see and control individual atoms and molecules. So, ang nanotechnology day, mo niya ang technology to use for for us to see nga ang mga atoms and molecules nga dili na to makita like mga gagmay na kayo. So, this is the technology that been used by the scientists uh, as of now. And it is also made up of atoms that we that the food we eat, the clothes we wear, the buildings and houses we live in, and our town and also in our own bodies so but something as small as an atom is impossible to see with the naked eye so in fact it is imp impossible to see with the microscope typically used in the high school and science classes so the microscopes they came on are needed to see things at the nanoscales where this uh these nanoscales were invented early 1980s so once scientists had the right tools such as the scanning, tunneling microscopes, and the atomic force microscope at the age of nanotechnology was born. So uh, as of today, scientists and engineers are finding a wide variety of ways to deliberately make uh, materials at the nanoscale to take advantage of their enhanced properties such as higher strength, lighter weight, increased control of light spectrum and greater chemical reactivity than their larger scale counterparts. So how the nanotechnology started? So uh, nanotechnology started with the ideas and concept behind the nanoscience and nanotechnology started with a talk entitled There's a Plenty Room at the Bottom. So uh, bef uh, before pa ning, ay, after ning nakuan siya ngay, da nagandog ka ng, mo siya ang kanang murag talk entitled like, there's a plenty room at the bottom. So, this is the kuan nga concept nga gi kuan ni, psychat, uh, psychiatrist Richard Feynman, an American Physical Society meeting 
at the California Institute of Technology, so the Caltech. So on December 29, 1959, long before the term nanotechnology was used. So by the December 29, 1959, the nanotechnology was being used. And also in his talk, Feynman described a process in which scientists would be able to manipulate, control individual atoms and molecules. So over a decade later, in his explorations of ultra precision machining, Professor Nario Taniguchi coined the term nanotechnology. It wasn't until 1981. So with the development of the scanning, tunneling microscope that could see individual atoms, that modern nanotechnology began. So by that time, the nanotechnology is been is been have vast positive impacts because it has a benefits associated with nanotechnology includes among others increases in yields and quality of produce in agriculture, improved co domestic products, direct de delivery of medicines and sensor applications. So as like what I said, so the formal definition of nanotechnology from the national nanotechnology initiative or the nni is nanotechnology is the understanding and control of matters at dimension between approximately 1 and 100 nanometers where unique phenomena enable novel applications so encompassing nanoscale science engineering and technology nanotech and the nanotechnology involves imaging measuring and modeling and manipulating matter this small scale so even nanotechnology is very, very small. When something is on the nanoscale, it measures between 1 to 100 nanometers. And it uh, at least one of its dimension when things are this small and they are much too small to see with our eyes. So for the next reporter, it will be reported by Ly Lion Barote about the instrument used in nanotechnology. Thank you. Thank you for enlightening us about what is nanotechnology, Mr. Harrow. Now let's move on to equipments used in nanotechnology. Nanotechnology tools and instruments are the hardware, software, and supplies used to measure and manipulate structures on the nanoscale. They include microscopes, probes, lithography systems, manipulation and fabrication systems, software, and other accessories. The discussion is focused on tools and techniques that are used for producing and imaging a nanoscaled object. Nanotechnology is made possible because of the instruments used to see things on the nanoscale. The invention of this happened years before the term nanotechnology was coined, but their invention is of course still worth mentioning. They form the basis of nanotechnology today. Here we will see some of the key microscope scientists and engineers used to work at the nanoscale. They allow us to be able to see at the nanoscale, to characterize with nanoscale materials and surfaces, and to move things around on surfaces in order to create devices. Number one is scanning electron microscope. Number two is scanning channeling microscope. Number three is atomic force microscope. Number four is field emission microscope. Number five is field ion microscope and number six is transmission electron microscope. In nanotechnology, the main scanning probes that have been used from the beginning are the atomic force microscope or AFM and scanning tunneling microscope STM. I will be discussing about the atomic force microscope. So what is AFM? Atomic force microscopy is also known as scanning force microscope. This device is used to vis visualizing, imaging, taking measures and for manipulating objects that are in nanometric scale. It was invented during 1986 by Gerd Binnig, Kite and Gerber invent the atomic force microscope. It can measure surfaces in a very accurate way using a probe tip mounted on a cantilever beam like a diving board. The position of the tip is monitored with a laser beam which is reflected off the cantilever onto a detector. As the tip scan back and forth, it moves up and down with the hills and valleys of the surface, which deflects the laser beam up and down. The information is recorded on a computer. From the information collected, we can understand information about the surface. It's possible 
to scan any surface with an AFM and at such high resolution amazing things can be seen. The AFM probe can also examine the friction of a surface. Different regions of a surface have different frictional properties as the tip scans along. The instrument can feel forces from a physical object but it can also feel forces of electric, electric charge. From the figure, it is understood that it has a sharp tip cantilever with a radius in nanometers which is used to scan the surface of the material. Many parameters can be measured with the help of an AFM. Some of the common measurements that are taken are chemical bonding, van der Waals force, mechanical contract force, capillary forces, Casimir forces, and so on. If additional probes are fitted to the device, many other parameters can also be measured. The detailed working of an atomic force microscope is shown in the figure below. In the case of the sample, its force is kept constant by mounting it on a piezoelectric tube. This tube has the capability to move the material in the x, y, and z directions. The movement in the x and y directions help in scanning the sample. The movement in the z direction keeps the force constant. Single walled carbon nanotubes have been attached to the tip of an AFM probe to make the tip sharper. This allows much higher resolution imaging of the surface under investigation. A single atom has been imaged on a surface using nanotube enhanced AFM probes. Also, the flexibility of the nanotube prevents damage to the sample, surface, and the probe tip if the probe tip happens to crash into the surface. Now let's move on to the different modes. Depending on the needs, the AFM can be operated in a number of modes. And some of these are will some of these will be discussed. First is a static or contact mode. In such a mode, the cantilever is moved across the surface of the material, which produces a deflection on the cantilever tip. This deflection is directly measured to know the value. In such an operation, the deflection of the tip is used as the signal for feedback. As the deflection can cause noise and drift to the signal, low stiffness cantilevers are normally used to amplify it. When a cantilever comes close to the material, the attractive forces tend to glue them. Thus, this method is always done in contact where a repulsive force is present. Second is the dynamic or non-contact mode. There is no contact between the tip of the cantilever and the surface of the material. This mode is more useful than contact mode as there will not be any kind of sample degradation effects. Thus, this mode is used for measuring soft materials. But if a rigid material is to be measured, both the modes have the same characteristics. If the AFM works in contact mode, it is able to scan the liquid layer of the material to capture the underlying surface. But, in non-contact mode, the AFM oscillates above the observed fluid layer so that both the liquid and the surface can be scanned. Other tools The very first devices that made us possible to see the nanoparticles were the scanning confocal microscope and the scanning acoustic microscope in the years 1961 and 1970. The latest techniques involve a method called position assembly in which the end of the scanning probe is used to make the nanoparticles visible. Second, some of the other tools that are needed in this field are for the application in nanolithography. It is a process that used to reduce a big material to nano size. Some of the methods that are used for this technique are optical lithography, x-ray lithography, deep pen nanolithography, and so on. Next is the scanning tunneling microscope which will be discussed by Ms. Supilanas. Thank you for that, Ms. Barote. So, scanning tunneling microscope, or STM, is one of the instruments used in nanotechnology. A scanning tunneling microscope, or STM, was developed in the year 1981 by Gerd Binig and Heinrich Rohrer. An STM is used for imaging surfaces at the atomic level. The lateral resolution of an STM lies around 0.1 nanometer, and deep resolution lies around 0.01 nanometer. This measure is more than enough to manipulate a good image. With this resolution, individual atoms within materials are routinely imaged and manipulated. This method can be used in different modes like air, water, high vacuum, liquid, and gas. It can also be used 
and very high and low temperatures. In an STM, when the tip of the device is both near the material, a difference in voltage is applied between them. This difference causes an the electrons to move through the empty space created between them. Such a method is called quantum tunneling. As a result, a current is formed which depends on the position of the tip of the device, the applied voltage, and the local density of states of the sample. The image is displayed on the monitor according to the scanning process of the tip on the material. The method is very precise unless and until the parameters are maintained according to the standards. The tip of the device should be sharp. The surface should be clean and stable. The device should have better control on the vibrations produced. Next slide, please. So, we have here some components used in STM. First, scanning tip. Second, piezoelectric controlled height. Third, X to Y scanner. Fourth, core sample to tip control. Fifth, vibration isolation system. Sixth, and lastly, computer. Next slide, please. So, as you can see in the figure, it shows how scanning tunneling microscope work. The tip of the device is moved closer to the sample in a controlled manner. At the same time, a voltage difference is brought to the tip of the device. As soon as the tip reaches very close to the material, the voltage difference is turns off. When the tip reaches close to the material, piezoelectric effect causes the accurate control of the tip. At such that would be all and the next topic is the historical breakthrough of nanotechnology that will be discussed by Ms. Helekame. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Supilanas and Ms. Barote for that thorough report as well as for sharing with us the instrument used in nanotechnology. For now, let's proceed to our next discussion. Do you believe that nanotechnology can be found in our everyday lives? From the tires on your cars to the medicines that can save your life? Every day, this concept improves our lives. It gives us the ability to discover new and helpful things. But have you contemplated as to when, where, and how nanotechnology began? If you are, let me bring you to where historical breakthroughs of nanotechnology began. Next slide, please. Norio Taniguchi. He is a Japanese scientist who was the first to use and define the term nanotechnology in 1974. He defined nanotechnology as mainly consisting of the processing of separation, consolidation, and deformation of materials by one atom or one molecule. Despite the fact that Norio Taniguchi used first the word nanotechnology, the first time the idea of nanotechnology was introduced was in 1959, when Richard Feynman, who is also considered as the father of nanotechnology, a physicist at Caltech, gave a talk entitled There's Plenty, Room, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom. Feynman implied that precise manipulation of atoms and molecules will ultimately be conceivable, although he never used the word nanotechnology openly. Additionally, he thought that it was the theoretically conceivable to build nanoscale machines by a cascade of billions of factories, which was an even more radical idea. The physicists predicted that these factories will, will be gradually scaled down versions of machine hands and tools. He projected that someday, these tiny machine shops will be able to build billions of even smaller factories. He also implied that in these conjectures that there are a number of variables that specifically influence the nanoscale level. In particular, he argued that gravity would become less significant as the scale shrunk while van der Waals attraction and surface tension would become crucial. So, the final analysis is the direct manipulation of individual atoms, a fundamental principle of nanotechnology, was covered for the first time in an academic discourse by Feynman. However, an American engineer named Kim Eric Drexler helped turn nanotechnology into a broader and wider field. After hearing Feynman speak in 1979 on atomic manipulation and nanofactories, Eric Drexler was inspired to put these ideas into practice by combining Feynman's concept of mole molecular, 
molecular manufacturing with current research in understanding protein function. Drexler remains objective from this point on was to expand on the physicist's breakthrough ideas. As a result, even though the name nanotechnology had not yet been defined, the field was established. In 1981, Drexler published his first article on the subject in the prestigious scientific journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Science titled Molecular Engineering, an Approach to Development of General Capabilities for Molecular Manipulation. Drexler's publication essentially expanded the idea of molecular manufacturing by integrating modern scientific ideas with Feynman's concepts. He so established in this work his own conception of molecular manufacturing. In particular, he highlights the potential for molecular manufacturing, a method of creating products with precise atomic specifications using protein molecules that have been specifically designed in his abstract. He asserts that doing so would, in, would inevitably result in the creation of molecular machinery that could place reactive groups with atomic accuracy. This publication revealed Drexler's early conception of molecular manufacturing, which was ultimately influenced by Feynman's discussion and so generated some interest in the scientific world. Consequently, the field of nanotechnology kept developing. Next slide, please. As you can see, these are important successes or the historical breakthroughs of nanotechnology in the modern era. First is the Benig and Rohrer created the scanning, tunneling, microscope or the STM in 1981. For the first time, with the help of this technology, individual atoms could be distinguished unambiguously. This discovery was crucial for the advancement of the field of nanotechnology despite its limits or conducting materials as it brought previously abstract ideas into perspective and made them testable. Next is the Atomic Force Microscope or the AFM, which was created in 1986. Remove some of these microscopy restrictions. This microscope could image non-conducting materials like organic molecules by creating an image through touch. The research of the carbon buckyball found at Rice University was made possible in large part by this invention. With these two accomplishments, nanotechnology could eventually advance via the scientific approach as opposed to Drexler's conceptual and thus untestable aspiration. Don Egler's groundbreaker stand at IBM serves as an illustration of this overarching pattern brought forth by advances in microscopy. He created the letters IBM by manipulating individual xenon atoms on a nickel surface. Egler and his research team expanded the field of nanotechnology by attempting to merely manipulate atoms using the microscopy equipment that was created in the early to mid-80s. On the other note, Nanotechnology has been existing a long time ago. Next slide, please. On the screen, you can witness the historic examples which show the existence of the use of nanotechnology for a long time ago. One of the most intriguing examples of nanotechnology in the ancient world was presented by the Romans in the 4th century AD, who employed nanoparticles and structures. One of the most remarkable works of ancient glass art is the Lycurgus Cup, which is part of the British Museum collection. It is the earliest well-known instance of digroic glass. Digroic glass refers to two distinct glass kinds that depending on the elimination. It can change color. Thus, thus the cup has two distinct colors, green in direct light and reddish purple when light is shining through the glass. Also, in the 6th to 15th century, gold nanoparticles and other metal oxide and chloride nanoparticles gave vivid stained glass windows in European cathedrals their deep hues. Gold nanoparticles also serve as the photocatalytic air cleaners. And lastly, in the 13th to 18th centuries, Damascus saber blades remained on an ultra-high carbon steel alloy that included carbon nanotubes and cementite nanowires. This steel composition provided the blade strength, resilience, 
the capacity to maintain a sharp edge and a more a pattern that gave them their name. While nanotechnology came into existence through Feynman's and then Drexler's vision of molecular manufacturing, the field has evolved in the 21st century to largely include research in chemistry and material science, as well as molecular engineering. As a result, a thorough grasp of this early history is integral to understanding the development and definition of both the realities and potential of nanotechnology today. All in all, Today, the goal for nanotech research is not to immediately create billions of assemblers that will revolutionize our world, but rather to explore the manufacturing and non-manufacturing aspects of nanotechnology through a combination of chemistry, material science, and molecular engineering. Before ending my report, can you comment on the chat box as to what aspect can be the nanotechnology be applied? So thank you for the comments and I think that's it for my report. I now give the floor to Ms. Mahinay for you to analyze how nanotechnology can be applied in such an aspect. Thank you everyone. Thank you Ms. Galikami for that informative discussion. Good afternoon everyone, especially to Ms. Sanchez. Now I'll be discussing about the applications of nanotechnology. After more than 20 years of basic nanoscience research and more than 15 years of focus R&D under the NNI, applications of nanotechnology are delivering in both expected and unexpected ways on nanotechnology's promise to benefit society. So, um, nanotechnology is helping to considerably improve, even revolutionize many technology and industry sectors just like information technology, homeland security, medicine, transportation, energy, food safety, and environmental science, among many others. So now I will discuss the sampling of the rapidly growing list of benefits and applications of nanotechnology. Next slide, please. So first is everyday materials and processes. Many benefits of nanotechnology depend on the fact that it is possible to tailor the structures of materials at extremely small scales to achieve specific properties, thus greatly extending the material science toolkit. So using nanotechnology, materials can effectively be made stronger, lighter, more durable, more reactive, or better electric conductors, among many other traits. Many everyday commercial products are currently on the market and in a daily use that rely on the nanoscale materials and processes. Nanoscale materials are beginning to enable washable, durable, smart fabrics equipped with flexible nanoscale sensors and electronics with capabilities for health monitoring, social energy capture, and energy harvesting through movement. The nanobioengineering of enzyme, nanoengineered materials, nanostructured, nanoparticles, and nanoscale are the materials being used by nanotechnology to revolutionize everything. Just like um, the nanobioengineering of enzyme is aiming to enable conversion of cellulose from wood chip, from wood chips, corn stalks, and fertilized perennial grasses, etc., into ethanol for fuel. Next slide, please. Next is electronics and IT applications. Nanotechnology has greatly contribu contributed to major advances in computing and electronics, leading to faster, smaller, and more portable systems that can manage and store larger and larger amounts of information. These continuously evolving applications include transistors, the basic switches that enable all modern computing have gotten smaller and smaller through nanotechnology. Using magnetic 
Random Access Memory, MRAM, computers will be able to boot almost instantly. MRAM is enabled by nanometer scale magnetic tunnel junctions and can quickly and effectively save data during system shutdown or enables resume play features. Ultra high definition displays and television are now being sold that use quantum dots to produce more vibrant colors while being more energy efficient. While the nanoparticle copper suspensions have been developed as a safer, cheaper, and more reliable alternative to lead-based solder and other hazardous materials commonly used to fuse electronics in the assembly process. So now let's move to medical and healthcare applications. Nanotechnology is already broadening the medical tools, knowledge, and therapies currently available to clinicians. Nanomedicine, the application of nanotechnology in medicine draws on the natural scale of biological phenomena to produce precise solutions for disease prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Commercial applications have adapted cold nanoparticles as probes for the detection or targeted sequence of nucleic acid and gold nanoparticles are also being clinically investigated as potential treatments for cancer and other diseases. Better imagining and diagnostic tools enabled by nanotechnology are paving the way for earlier diagnosis more individualized treatment options, and better therapeutic success rates. Nanotechnology researchers are working on a number of different therapeutics where a nanoparticle can encapsulate or otherwise help to deliver medication directly to cancer cells and minimize the risk of damage to healthy tissue. This has the potential to change the way doctors treat cancer and dramatically reduce the toxic effects of chemotherapy. Nanomedicine researchers are looking at ways that nanotechnology can improve vaccines, including vaccine delivery without the use of needles. Researchers also are working to create a universal vaccine scaffold for the annual flu vaccine that would cover more strains and require fewer resources to develop each year. Next slide, please. So, next is energy applications. Nanotechnology is finding application in traditional energy sources and is greatly enhancing alternative energy approaches to help meet the world's increasing energy demands. Many scientists are looking into ways to develop clean, affordable, and renewable energy sources along with means to reduce energy consumption and lessen toxicity burdens on the environment. Nanotechnology is improving the efficiency of fuel production from raw petroleum materials through better catalysis. It is also enabling reduced fuel consumption in vehicles and power plants through higher efficiency combustion and decreased friction. Nanotechnology is also being applied to oil and gas extraction through, for example, the use of nanotechnology enables gas lift valves in offshore operation or the use of nanoparticles to detect microscopic downwell oil pipeline fractures. Researchers are investigating carbon nanotube scrubbers and membranes to separate carbon dioxide from power plant exhaust. Energy efficiency and energy saving products are increasingly in number and types of application. In addition, nanotechnology is enabling more efficient lightning system, lightner and stronger vehicle materials for the transportation sector, lower energy consumption in advanced electronics, and light responsive smart coatings for glass. So next is environmental remediation. In addition to the ways that nanotechnology can help improve energy efficiency, 
There are also many ways that it can help detect and clean up environmental contaminants. Nanotechnology could help meet the need of affordable, clean drinking water through rapid, low-cost detection and treatment of impurities in water. Nanoparticles are being developed to clean industrial water pollutants in groundwater through chemical reactions that render the pollutants harmless. This process would cost less than methods that require pumping the water out of the ground for treatment. Nanotechnology-enabled sensors and solutions are now able to detect and identify chemical or biological agents in the air and soil with much higher sensitivity than ever before. Next slide, please. Last but not the least is the future transportation benefits. Nanotechnology offers the promise of developing multifunctional materials that will contribute to building and maintaining lighter, safer, smarter, and more efficient vehicles, aircraft, spacecraft, and ships. In addition, nanotechnology offers various means to improve the transportation infrastructure. New systems may incorporate innovative capabilities into traditional infrastructure materials such as self-repairing structures or ability to generate or transmit energy. Game-changing benefits from, from the use of nanotechnology enabled lightweight, high-strength materials would apply to almost any transportation vehicle. Nanoscale sensors, communications devices, and other innovation enabled by nanoelectronics can also support and enhance transportation infrastructure that can communicate with vehicle-based system to help drivers maintain lane position, avoid collisions, adjust travel routes to avoid congestion, and improve drivers' interfaces to onboard electronics. So that's all for my part. Um, let's move to the positive and negative impacts of nanotechnology to be discussed by Ms. Thea. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Grace. Next, we'll be talking about the ways nanotechnology impacts in our daily lives. So first would be the faster, smaller, and more powerful computers. So. Nanotechnology contributes to compact, efficient computers that consume far less powerful and use long-lasting batteries. Circuits made from carbon nanotubes could be a vital in maintaining the growth of computer power. Second, faster, more accurate medical diagnostic equipment with lab on a chip technology enabling point of care testing in real time. Nanotechnology helps to speed up the delivery of medical care. Additionally, um, nanomaterial surfaces on imp implants improve wear and resist infection. Third, improved pharmaceutical products. The use of nanoparticles in a pharmaceutical products makes them easier for the body to absorb and easier to deliver. Often through combination medical devices, nanoparticles can also be delivered in chemotherapy drugs to specific cells such as cancer cells. Fourth, improved vehicle fuel efficiency and corrosion resistance so by building vehicle parts from nanocomposite materials that are lighter stronger and more chemically resistant than metal nanotechnology helps improve fuel efficiency and corrosion resistance nanofilters remove nearly all airborne particles from the air before it reaches the com combustion chamber further improving gas millage. Fifth would be the stain resistant. 
water resistant and flame resistant fabrics. Nanoparticles or nanofibers in fabrics can enhance stain resistance, water resistance, and flame resistance without a significant increase in the weight, thickness, or stiffness of the fabric. For example, nano whiskers on pants make them resistant to water and stain. Next would be improved water quality. So water filters that are only 15 to 20 nanometers wide can remove nano-sized particles, including virtually all viruses and bacteria. These cost-efficient um, portable water treatment systems are ideal for improving the quality of drinking water in emerging countries. So, stronger, lighter weight sports equipment, carbon nanotubes have, have a variety of commercial uses, such as improving the design of sports equipment. For example, a tennis racket made of carbon nanotubes bends less during impact and increases the force and accuracy of the delivery. So with nanoparticle treated tennis balls, it can keep bouncing twice as long as the standard tennis balls. Next would be reduced UV exposure. Most sunscreens today are made up of nanoparticles that effectively absorb light, including the more dangerous ultraviolet range. So they also spread more easily over the skin. These same nanoparticles are also used in food packaging to reduce UV exposure and prolong shelf life. Next, increase shelf life of plastic bottles. Many drink bottles are made from plastics containing nanoclays, which increase resistance to permission by oxygen, carbon dioxide, and moisture. This helps retain carbonation and pre pressure and increase shelf life by se several months. Next and lastly, um, enhanced surveillance and security systems. Thanks to nanotechnology, a huge variety of chemical sensors can be programmed to detect a particular chemical at amazingly low levels. For example, a single molecule out of billions. This capability is ideal for surveillance and security systems at labs, industrial sites, and airports. Um, on the medical front, nanosensors can also be used to accurately identif identify particular cells or substances in the body. So next would be the negative impacts of nanotechnology. First would be weapons of war. On the instrumental level, concerns include the possibility of military applications of nanotechnology, for instance, as in implants in other means of for soldier enhancement like those being developed at the Institute of Soldier Nanotechnologies at MIT as well as enhanced surveillance capabilities through nanosensors. There is also the possibility of nanotechnology being used to develop chemical weapons and because they will be able to develop the chemicals from the atom scale up, critics fear that chemical weapons developed from nanoparticles will be more dangerous than present chemical weapons. Next fear of the unknown nanotechnology is quite new concept and some effects are time dependent so it's difficult for experts to predict the damage nanoparticles might do there are concerns about how nanoparticles may accumulate in nature um, could large amounts be ingested by fish and if so, would it be harmful? So, will the particles be passed along the food chain like DDT? So, 
it is vital to find out how to remove or simply detect nanomaterials if they become problematic. Next would be full type. Some worry that nanotechnology will end up like virtual reality. In other words, the hype surrounding nanotechnology will continue to build until the limitations of the field become public knowledge. Next would be health. While the very size of the reason nanotechnology is most likely to be widely used in various medical applications, it is also the very reason that we may have to be wary of using the same for treating patients. For example, given its tiny minuscule size, these nanoparticles can affect healthy normal cells. And what's more, these nanoparticles do not register on our immune system because of their size. In short, we need to learn more about nanotechnology because, I mean, sorry, before we start using the same to help the treat pa patients. So, and as a side note, it was recently discovered that certain nano agents bonded with the host DNA causing deformations to its structure. Um, next would be environment. Nanotechnology is still being tested to tackle industrial pollution, especially over large water bodies. So not much research has been done on how it can impact the environment. The fact of the matter that their very size can make it hard to exactly determine how long the nanoparticles will remain part of the local environment after they have been released into it or for that matter understand how they will impact the local flora and fauna given that the fact that certain nano agents have caused deformations in the host DNA makes this a pertinent issue that we have to just, um, consider. Until there is an active way to control, monitor, and detect nanoparticles, it will be hard to justify any commercial applications of the same. Moreover, so this is a nascent tech at best and still needs to be widely researched and studied before we can expect to see any commercial application of the same in the future. That's all for the positive and negative impacts of nanotechnology. I would just like to give credit to our resources. Thank you so much everyone for listening. I hope you learned something for today and thank you.